Youth in revolt. Well, uh, I, I just I just feel like if um, if we do do this review, um, we'll have to uh, step it up a little bit. Perhaps. We might we we, or, we might have to start acting, and and I don't know if we can strain our, our vocal that, cords it, enough to it, to act today after we've after we've seen this fine fine performance by Michael Sarah. Now 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 in this film we are seeing two sides of Michael Sarah. To be fair, there's this Michael Sarah, and then there's the rebellious Francois Michael Sarah, who's more I, like this. Uh, Hi, I'm the rebellious Michael Sarah. <laughs> I, 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 I would like even, to set you on fire. That yeah. would be that. I, I think that would be yeah, very nice. The, the, the thing is, even something that's flat has two sides. Well, <laughs> well, hey, I mean, you guys are doing Michael Sarah, but the only problem is we can understand you. Most of, in other Michael Sarah movies, most of the time, it's like hey, 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 hey. So, what? <laughs> hey, your, your fucking speech needs to be in revolt because hey, I can't understand what you're talking about. You know, those man. of us that those of us that grew up hanging out with high school nerds speak fluent nerdies and. He is speaking it perfectly. Okay, oh, grew up with. Is <laughs> yeah. that what you're going with now? I was hanging out with the football kids team. who are not quite. Yeah, when I was captain of the football team, <laughs> he, and, he and, was a and captain of the heart of, head of the league club <laughs> and uh, and president of the school. I was hanging out with these kids in part of an outreach program. <laughs> uh, uh, hi, I'm hi, uh, I'm Carlisle. I, I, I like this. Shut movie. up. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Fucking stuff it. He, he was the one who's I'm pick cool up now, motherfuckers. That's the, all that matters. I'll, I'll yeah, man. What does Flash Thompson's fist taste like anyway there, Carlo? Bacon. <laughs> it tastes like bacon. Big, meaty palms of bacon. And who wouldn't like bacon? You think, you wonder why nerds get beat up all the time? It's because they want to get beat up because they love the taste of bacon because who doesn't? Really? I mean, this isn't a D&D nerd. This is the new kind of nerd. This is the, I want to, like, travel the world and speak French and I like like obscure indie bands. Oh, it's a hipster. Hip yeah, it's, a hip it's the <laughs> hipster, hipster nerd. nerd. Cyrus nerd. It's the, well, no, that's not exactly <laughs> no, no, true. No, Cyrus is more of a geek. Yeah, I was more of a geek. I was just cool for a geek. Yeah, but dude, come on. No, don't, 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 don't do that. Well, compared to some of the geeks around me, you didn't see those guys. I admit I was a geek. <laughs> see, but Cyrus Jesus. was part of my outreach program. <laughs> <laughs> we grew up together and it, hanging it, out being <laughs> cooler than everyone else. And that else. program failed. <laughs> <laughs> If anything, they can't all go to the moon, Corey. <laughs> if anything, he was your gateway. You you probably were the captain of the football team. And Cyrus came up and hey. like, hey, man, I got this copy of D&D. &D. You know, try it. Everyone <laughs> needs a gay best friend. Hey, man, I had to find him. Look, look, Carla, I'll loan you my crystal set of dice. But, you know, after that, you're going to have to start buying your own. I know. He's like he's like a nerd drug dealer out there passing D&D &D kits out. That motherfucker will be a dungeon master in no time. I got him. <laughs> He's coming back to you. Hey, hey man. Hey, man. I got your monster manual, yeah. too. Yeah. He was coming to me. Come on, man. Come on. Just hook me up. All I need is escape from the borderlands. Just let Come me on, have man. it. I, I need some I need some eight sided dice real quick. <laughs> hey, that's gonna cost you this time. Okay. I, I'm going to have to nerd check you there for a second. It's it's keep on the borderlands. Oh Jesus. Oh, Jesus. But you know what? Uh, you, you win. Yeah. <laughs> and in that I same, the nerdiest. And in that you, same you, sense, you win the worst contest you, ever. You fail. <laughs> well, now you can see how much shit we're talking about, how the old school nerds are. So nerds are kind of like, man, you know what? We gotta step it up a little bit. We got to be like how rappers were because rappers started out kind of nerdy too, and then they ended up with gangster rap. So now we got gangster nerds. You know? <laughs> well, this guy, he's so ineffectual and pale and, and, and slight. I feel like he's going to appear in the next Twilight film and get beaten up by the other bigger vampires or something. You know, he's like, no. he's so pathetic. And well, okay, he's Michael Sarah. Y'all already know. What am I even bothering explaining this for? But. We saw to, year one. You know what he's capable of. We're supposed to be believe that this guy is, uh, you know, I'm not saying it's unbelievable, but that he's really smart to the point that he's got no social life at all. He's intimidated by other people. But once again, he's that cool type of smart. He's not like in real life, the smart guys who, you know, don't say funny, witty things all the time. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, I mean, first of all, you know, the, the true classic nerd has a a really nerdy name. Yeah. And, and what's his what's his name? Nick, Nick Twisp. Nicholas Twisp. Which isn't that bad. It's vaguely Dick, Dickensian. Hey, that, that's that's actually kind of cool having a last name like Twisp. I, I do a lot so. with that. I oh, thought so too. Oh yeah, not today grow yourself an ironic mustache and tell people your last name. You get laid in a minute Shit, like that. except they're going to call you Twist and then you're in <laughs> trouble. <man. laughs> what you call me? <laughs> but uh, he plays a guy. He, I mean, he's got nothing going for him. I mean, he's not rich. He lives in a trailer with his trailer tra trash mom. 
his trailer trash, uh, his his mother's boyfriend, yeah, played Zach by Zach Galifianakis. <laughs> yeah, if that's your stepdad, uh, you know, then you know you're a loser. And hey, things can go nowhere but up. Yeah, and you know, usually it's well, something- he's, he's he's a virgin. He's got no girlfriend. He's got no prospects. Uh, I mean, he's like on the lowest rung ever. Wait, oh. wait, I. I'm not seeing where this is a bad thing. I, I, well, I, I totally identified with this. He character. might end up being a film critic. Well, no, in this situation, now, anybody else in this kind of situation, you live in a trailer trash home, you got a trailer trash mom, got a dickish uh, uh, stepdad, uh, you would end up being Eminem in 8 Mile at any other yeah. time. But, you know, this guy has no charisma. He can't get anybody. Yeah, your 15 he, minutes is going to be on peoplewalmart.com. No, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the camera. Oh. oh man, it's the guy who dressed up like a wizard. <laughs> but, but he, I mean, he has nothing. So he has no charisma. He's a nerdy guy. He's masturbating a hustler every night. He has so he has no chance of getting any kind of girls. It was fantastic. Wait, yeah. So well, I'm still having a hard time figuring out how he's not like us. Not like y'all. But anyway, <laughs> wait, so, what's, what, what's this under the table, Corey? Hustler. <laughs> oh man, that's uh, that's, that's research. That's the somebody, big uh, black dicks, <laughs> pearly white cum. Oh, that's the, the, that's the, Cyrus's. The, 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 the movie, what? The movie company sent that as a promo piece. Yeah, hustle of the movie coming you out. You know very well. The only subscription I have is to massive jugs. Damn, you and, are, well, <laughs> it's, it's, it, it's a beer company. Yeah, it's massive very, jugs. I do get the yearly special Christmas issue of massive lactating yeah, you jugs. See the, you, you, you want to see the cover of that? Take your shirt off, look in the mirror. Oh but, no, come on, man. That's that's a oh, 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 like right that. there. Oh now, oh I hit low now. <laughs> no, I'm just trying to have some fun. You, you got to go there. <laughs> yeah, why'd you, why'd you have to do that? Just bring the party down. Damn, Corey, bad. Corey, yeah, bad. You know court. what? You know what? Go to bed. I'll fix you. I'll fix you a glass of warm milk. Oh. Oh, uh, lactating yeah, jugs. Uh, can I grab that hustler while I'm on my way? <laughs> but no, so he they to I won't explain here, but they have to outrun these Navy guys. So they go out to some other trailer park where uh, Nick meets his girl Sheeny, and Sheeny she seems like a cog tease at first, but. She's kind of having it. She's kind of like a, a geek just like he is. And they start to like, and she starts dropping little hints of like, she wants to fuck. I mean, you know, there's no doubt about it. Yeah, she wants to fuck the way a 16-year-old girl wants to fuck who hasn't fucked yet. Like, I'm very curious. It's like, come here, no go away. Come here, no go away. Yeah. Come here, no go away. Yeah, 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 exactly. I mean, like I said. Chloroform she, takes care of that right away. It does. Damn. That works so well. <laughs> well, though, what's, what, what's interesting is that at this moment, she mistakes him for something of a cool guy slash bad boy, you know, that he He's come in and he, they have a moment together where he reacts in a way that she perceives as cool and he perceives as frightened as shit. And so she thinks she's getting involved in somebody interesting and then discovers that, no, he's just some dork. Yeah. But that doesn't turn her off from him, no. which, which is what I think is kind of cool about the movie is that you're right. She first comes off as a cock tease and you think, I know where this is going. But she's kind of into him, so there's a little play back and forth the whole time. It's like, is she really into him? Is she going to dump him? Oh, she's going to dump him now. Well, maybe she's not. Well, see, this is where the trailer, I think, is misleading because they make you think that she is kind of teasing him. So to get her, he has to be a bad guy, has to be a bad boy. But no, she they actually hook up. But because of some geography issues, they ship her away. These the, her religious parents don't like him. A never-ending series of cock blocks. Oh, of course. Oh, yes. I mean, every, <laughs> everything. He, the, they, this nerdy guy finally gets the girl, and life and then, just gets in the way. Then Corey Coleman moves in next door. <laughs> that shit yeah. is over. Yeah, that, that force was me. <laughs> How's it going, Sheenie? Oh, my God. I must invent an alternate personality <laughs> named Francois to beat Corey Coleman. Well, that's, hey, that, this it, is, what's that? I was just going say, it's one of God's edicts that, like, hey, the Saints cannot win the Super Super Bowl, and this guy will never get laid. I don't care what. Well, yeah, well, when Sheena gets taken away, she drops hints that, you know, her ideal man has been a guy, Francois. So he thinks that, all right, you know, to actually move back to where she is and probably get her kicked out of school to be with me, I got to be Francois and just cause chaos wherever I go. And that's where we get this slimy, porno-looking guy with the bad mustache. Well, let's be honest. The, the, the bad pubic hair beard that he has on his chin. The, the, it's, the French it's not as much. The, yeah. 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 Yeah, the, yeah, the French badass, which is an oxymoron in itself. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's Fuck not so you. We liberated <laughs> France by ourselves. <laughs> it's, it's not so we much. just let you believe that you want it. Sure, it is ironic 
but isn't that just like life? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's <laughs> spit on you, Leah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not so much a conscious decision as it is a psychotic Tyler Durden moment that no, happens. You're right. I yeah. kept thinking watching this film. I was like, you know what? It's telling this film through like the funny romantic comedy, quirky indie film angle. But you all too easily could remake this entire film from the th- horror thriller angle. Oh, yeah. Because it's not like, hey, let's play some cute little practical jokes, like some cute youth rebellion. No, dude, this guy, if he had been 18, he would have been in jail for like 25 years after oh, yeah. the shit he oh, yeah. pulls. There's several, <laughs> there's several situations where he could have easily killed 20 people. Oh, yeah. And he just got lucky and didn't. I, I know how you feel. <laughs> yeah. No, I really it's, identify. But no, it's, uh, in, in, it's at this point where the movie, I think, is going to kind of turn people off because where people think they're going to get into like a really straight note comedy, this is more like an independent film to me. Oh, it's a totally... I mean, yeah. to me, this is everything... When I saw Napoleon Dynamite... Are you tearing up? What's no, going no, I'm not. I'm get not, flashbacks? It's all the code. From the jungle. See, back the jungle. I saw Napoleon the Dynamite jungle. and it broke my heart because I knew what kind of movie it was supposed to be and everybody was saying it was, but I watched I'm like, this is dull as dishwater and it's not any of that. And I feel like this was closer to what that was saying it was supposed to be. That kind of quirky indie movie where uh, you think it's, it's going one way and it doesn't. It's all socially awkward people. It's, it's that same kind of movie with more of a plot with some interesting things happening. Now, it doesn't mean it doesn't lose me at times. Quite often it did. At the same time, it's I, I couldn't help but identify more with Little Miss Sunshine, which it felt like one of those manufactured indie comedies. Like, oh, here's an indie comedy, sort of, but really what it's doing is it's a complete studio film that's learned from watching indie comedies and has adopted a lot of their type of pseudo quirkiness into it. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying it feels a little too precious and thought out. It's not times. it's not just an imitation indie comedy. It is a hardcore attempt at being a hipster comedy. There are moments where they cut away to scenes that of animation that don't belong in this film. <laughs> no, they're not what, funny at all. They're they're not funny and they don't belong in the film. They don't advance the story. They're there to be hip and cool because this is what all the kids are into right now. And it literally takes you out of the movie and goes, wow this movie's trying to win me over because it's appealing. It's appealing to the crowd that uh, 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 where all uh, where the wild things are appealed to, where yeah. uh, Paper Heart appealed to. But really, this movie came six months too late, and we're literally sitting here going, "Yeah, we've seen every single trick you've thrown at us yeah. a few times too many." It's entirely and obviously manufactured. It wears it on its sleeve almost as if it was proud of it. That being said, a lot of it is clever. Although I can't help but think what I've heard from people saying about the book that that owes more to the original text it's taken from oh there's a book yeah, yeah apparently it's based on a very popular book but you know at the same time this sounds like exactly the type of film that you can picture the conversation with michael Sarah, his agent and the person trying to sell it to him it's like no there's like maybe 10 scripts you can actually do and this is one of them <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, sorry man you didn't get kick ass uh, we, they gave that to mclovin mclovin again i'll kill him i'll kill him or actually it's more like yeah i I think I'm gonna can, uh, I think I might hurt him uh, like badly. <laughs> but, it, I, well, no, no, go ahead. Well, I was gonna say like I never thought I would say anything good about Michael Sarah. I don't hate him, but just think he's like meh. But there's times in this movie where I really like him. Like I thought he showed some like range for him anyway. In as much as he's playing his milk toast, you know, ineffectual character, but he showed some real vulnerability at times where I really felt for him. And then he would transform into uh, Francois and it was actually those are the fun parts that was like whenever Francois would come on the screen he owned the screen it's that's like, what sold the movie as far as I'm concerned yeah. because I was getting kind of sick of Michael Sarah at that point going look man we've seen you play I mean yeah you're good at this role I'm not going to call you a bad actor in the sense of this one role you keep doing you sell it every single time but I'm getting sick of it and in this movie I'm getting sick of it and then they introduce the alter ego and it's not that the alter ego is more interesting it's just that those are the really funny scenes of the film the fact that the interplay between the two of them, like whenever his alter ego comes out, his alter ego becomes the one who's actually performing the action where the actual Michael Sarah watching is just watching his alter ego do these things. Well, that is the effect in real life. Yeah. Well, you know what? I was totally the guy who didn't like Michael Sarah at one time. I mean, I'm the same person who said, you know what? This guy is wimpy. He's dull. He has no charisma at all. He gets more pussy but, than me and I don't understand it. But he in this movie, I'm beginning to like 
Michael Sarah more because Michael Sarah is actually becoming like he's he's ma- he's making that personality work for him because yeah. he can be a smart ass guy every now and then, especially in the scenes where he's um with his parents. Uh, well, when he's with his mom and Ray Liotta, who has come in as a police officer and becomes a new boyfriend. Ray, we, Ray we Liotta can only play how. police officer at yeah. this point. Yeah, <laughs> at this point, either gangsters or police officers. The moment he got puffy, it was like that's all you're getting is police officer role. But there's scenes that he has with his mom, played by Gene Smart and Ray Liotta, where when he, uh he's just had enough of them and he starts to kick in with these little smart ass comments and you at this point he's been like trampled on so much in life that this is what this is the kind of guy that you want to actually see begin to like get balls and so if there's any movie that michael Sarah's personality worked it was this one i mean i liked him before francois even came into the picture well you're rooting for him because of exactly what you said that yeah this guy has been trampled on and the interesting thing about the film is that francois doesn't do what any other film would do where it's like this minor youth rebellion it's crazy fucked up shit he's doing it's jailable offenses like insane oh shit and it's funny watching it play out and you sit there wondering because you do kind of like Sarah and you like you see how he needs that rebellion but I found myself wa- worried for his sanity I, I oh, thought yeah. I thought there was a, a very good chance the end, oh. film was going to end with him locked up in a and nut he house. should have been I mean, that's what the movie I, see I think they could have pushed it a little bit more if they wanted to go this indie route and that's my problem with it is that Michael Sarah in the movie he's crazy I mean he's psychotic he, he really and is he, you, they're, thinking like, they're, they're making it seem like he's just mischievous in the trailers no he has a mental problem and he's causing I mean if they don't lock him up He's going to hurt somebody, including this girl that he's trying to get with. Well, they're but, trying that's, to, go ahead. but that's actually the thesis of the film, and that's what's interesting about it is, is the movie opens up explaining that women that in real life, women don't like the nice guys. Women want pricks, and the pricks end up with the guys, and the pricks are the ones that get laid time and again. And, this and movie Corey then, has proven that. Corey <laughs> has proven that time and again. And this movie goes on to illustrate that, because the more of a prick this guy is, the more he gets this girl wrapped around his finger. And, and the, what the movie he does is separates um separates francois from uh from nick so that we can still like nick and still identify with him and still get the point across because if we really do acknowledge the fact that nick's not crazy this is just the the devil and angel going on in his head throughout the film we wouldn't like him at all because he's becoming a total douchebag to get the girl of his dreams trying to illustrate uh, the mind of a 16 year old boy in a new way which is actually pulling that devil and angel out and showing even the nicest kids when they hit that age Age, and that time that their hormones aren't just tingling, they fucking go off like a yeah. neutron bomb. Oh, yeah. All reasonability and accountability just goes away for a year or two it, yeah. well, to thing- get that tail. And that's what we're this, this is what this movie's about. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I mean, you know, it, it takes many decades for that to go away when you don't go on a mission for the tail. And some even in this room, <laughs> it, it never I, does. I, I know you're talking about me because I told you. I told you. Do we even there. have to bring no, that up? I, I told Cyrus in the middle of the movie, he's like. Man, tell me you've done half the stuff to like get a girl. I was like, no, I've done worse. See, in the movie, he did it. He did it for love. I did, did it for pussy. You just did it to get laid. I was, on, I was on top of a building, tearing up puppies and burning kids. I'm like, I want to fuck you, Mary Beth. Like, you know, he's <laughs> blowing up the towers like in Fight Club. Yeah, exactly. And you're, like, can I fuck you now or what? Yeah, and, you, and, and you know what? I, it worked. You did. I'm going to have to try blowing up a hey, large public hey, you, building. You got to give it up to the man for his results. <laughs> no, I mean, to be fair, you you were 16. You remember what it was like? You thought you were in love. Oh, but yeah. the 16. honest truth was you it were just shit last you year. were just trying to get laid. <laughs> this shit last week. <laughs> yeah, no, I did. I ain't did anything, man, to get, to get some ass. But I mean, you guys got to admit, though, with, with Francois, okay, Francois is sort of speaking for the audience at times. He's like, he's that guy you want to be like, you want to be there to be that his Francois saying, hey man, get your shit together and, and, and fuck that bitch or leave her alone or do this. But Francois just takes it a little bit further than any of us would. It's oh. like, good, I'm glad you didn't say something to, oh, wait, 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 whoa, whoa, what are you doing? No. No, it's this, this, there's no real moral <laughs> message to this movie because while Michael Sarah is crazy, uh, Sheeny, who's played by the fine ass chick, I hope she's legal, Portia Doubleday. Portia. <laughs> Portia. Yeah. Portia. Portia. She's, <laughs> she's even sexier now. Uh, no, she's uh, in the movie, she's a little bit off herself that she, because she, they've already hooked up together. And the more dangerous shit he does, the more she really is into him. Gosh, I mean, we don't yeah. know any girls like that. <laughs> I mean, if, if, if Michael Sarah, oh wait a minute, I think I only know girls that's like that. That's the only kind of girl I know. And that's directed towards somebody else, not me. That's, that's all of us. Oh yeah, no, no. I mean, she's the kind of chick. If you gave her a severed head for Valentine's Day, she'd be all over you. I mean, it's like she's she's not too she's not too uh, sane herself. Um. And, 
I'm not going to say she's crazy. She's just that girl who feels alone. She's a 16 year old girl, just like he's a 16 year old boy. Like I said, crazy. Hormones are, yeah, well, in that sense, yeah. But I mean, she's different than everybody else. She doesn't know how to identify. She's got the big old biff, the, the arty version of the football player who's hitting on her, trying to get her affection because she's a hot girl, no question about it. Oh, yeah. But she's got nothing in common with this guy. She's totally confused. And he's a douche. And when Uber Dork shows up, who couldn't be less physically attractive if he had fucking hair growing on every inch of his body like Robin Williams, well, you know, when he walks up and suddenly they've got every thing in common she's confused a little freaked out she didn't know what to do the, well, hot, the guy who's physically hot but a complete douchebag now, hold, hold on the, they have they have r- huge things uh in that are different about them she for instance she loves 50s french cinema and he loves 50s italian cinema. <laughs> that's true that's, that's true. something they that's, will never resolve that's a deal breaker it, yeah. it is it's true it's like neorealism oh, my yeah. ass i know i can't tell you how many times that has messed me up you well, know? Reckless, really that's I, your favorite i just film? walked out of a first date when it started with the 400 blows. I was like, you know what? Fuck Dude, you. The 400, 400 blows is how you end a good date. <laughs> I know. I'm, I, I can't tell you how many times I have to tell a chick, damn, Or baby. 400 dates. Damn, damn, girl, I'm more of a bicycle thief, man. My, <laughs> you know, shit, I'm sorry. I, that ends everything here. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, you know what? I, it's, I, in, a, in a way, it's trying to be an independent comedy even more is that everybody in the movie, it's one of those comedies where everybody has something wrong with them. Everybody's I mean, a little bit quirky. Everybody's off. I mean, you know... Uh, Fred, Fred, what's his name? Willard. Fred Willard, Willard plays Willard. a Willard? neighbor who loves Willard. to like Willard. Fred. Who just? Well, I don't know. Ward, Fred Willard. Willard. Fred Willard. Okay. Fred Willard. Fred no, Willard is, the, is, is Remo oh, Williams. Yes. Yes. Okay. Fred Willard. I know Fred. And I he, love Fred. He's, he's Willard. our friend. Fred Willard is probably the most downplayed character in this movie. He plays a guy who's a neighbor who wants to like help uh, legal aliens over. And then you this have is in like yeah. three minutes of the movie. That's yeah. Yeah. Uber yeah. Ble- 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 bleeding heart liberal who has nothing better to do than to minorly break the law. And then the parents of you know they're christian to the point of being crazy you know just very fundamentalist christian and that it's the, the parents played by emmett walsh and mary Kay place by the way emmett, em, emmett, walsh, em, 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 emmett walsh no he's it did he i could have sworn he died he looked like year. he's you dead. know what there's, there's a lot of those guys like him and like i thought charles derning was dead and i saw him in a director video movie last oh, yeah. night okay no it, em, emmett walsh at this point looks like some shit out the dark crystal oh, I'm <laughs> i mean he plays this girl sheeny's dad and i'm like how is this guy still fucking this girl's 16 i mean he looks like he's a thousand years old yeah, you know what does. you got a good point i didn't think about that when, i mean he's, he's, he should I, be the grandfather he shouldn't be the yeah. father how old is your dad my dad, his, man, his dad, I was his, late. Yeah, yeah my dad. His, his dad, his father passed away. What are you talking about? No, no, about? I know, but was, wasn't your dad like 50 something when you were born? Yeah. Well, you yeah, can, yeah you that's, can have that's exactly what this is. You can have children when you're 80 if you're the dude. But you gotta find the problem is you gotta find a chick who'll fuck you. No, no, but but but, but M. M. Emmett Walsh was like he's eighty, so at he least. would have, to have been sixty four <laughs> yeah. at the time she was. Yeah, born. my dad was they like forty something when he had me. He still, he wasn't retired. He was still working. He was just older. Yeah. Well, either I way, it's, it's, it's neither his fifties or sixties. It's neither here 50s nor there. Sixties. You don't know what fifties or sixties are if you're saying that. Are we really getting worked up about this particular issue? <laughs> <laughs> Does this really matter? I, I know I, I, I know that you're nearing retirement age, Leon. But, uh, <laughs> oh, I didn't catch that. Okay, yeah, you're right. But, uh, you know, I mean, I, I, I like the movie. I do. I, I, I don't hate it because the whole time I'm looking at it, I'm like, there's a lot of stuff in here. I, I'm having a, 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 I'm laughing out loud at. Yeah. But the movie just overall just feels disjointed. I mean, it's taking all these twists and turns, which I just don't feel like there was like a real cohesiveness to the plot going on. Uh so you have jokes that work, just not a very strong story. I mean, and it, it, it's okay for this kind of movie because you're not really trying to sympathize with anybody. You're laughing at people more than laughing with them. Oh, oh. it sounded like you were about to do your. Oh reading. well, you know what? <laughs> yeah, uh, well, I was no, waiting for it. It was like, oh, oh that, okay. Well, it. if we're gonna do that, I mean, let me just say this one more time. Uh, again, the independent film come Phil comes in. This is uh, directed by Miguel Arteta, who did The Good Girl with Jennifer Aniston, which is an excellent little. Yeah, film. yeah, like yeah, that. and I like that film. And in, to, in this movie. It's it's a it's an independent film trying to be too mainstream and it just didn't feel natural to me so that's why I give it a rental. Uh, well, I, you know what I was also going to say that like this movie comes in it weighs in, in in that gray area of like you know what's what's stalkering what's being creepy and what's just loving somebody so much and not knowing how to express it. I mean we got teenagers who are awkward and don't know this and yet we're in a culture now where the minute somebody does something the least bit off everybody's quick to label and like that guy's a creep. He's a stalker. I'd watch him. It's like, well, maybe there is some gray area. 
Although, the more you watch this, the more you go like, okay, this guy is potentially dangerous. Yeah. So, but, but, but I love that <laughs> about it. Not potentially. He blows <laughs> shit up. But, 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 <laughs> I mean, you know what? I, I mean, as much as I hate observing report, the only thing I liked about it was like, at first you think, oh, this guy's a dumbass. And you go like, oh, shit, he's got a mental problem. Well, can I say, uh, no, this guy has a split personality. He's schizophrenic. Yeah. And yeah. he's dangerously so. But at least he has a heart. Where an observing report, that guy did not, he did not do it for love. That guy was he was a creep. I don't yeah. know if I entirely agree that he actually has a split personality. It yeah. seems more metaphorical than it actually is. I thought it was uh, just deliberate. illustrating that teenage kid who seems normal you one day. Himself. No, you no, said no. yourself. You was Tyler Durden, man. No, no, no. no. I mean, I agree the way the movie is showing it. I'm just saying that, it was, as I said earlier, mm -hmm. it's illustrating metaphorically the teenage kid. That thing that one day he's the sweetest, nicest kid in the world, and the next day he's a fucking monster. And the parents are like, where the hell did that come from? Yeah, but I don't know. They showed it from his point of view. I was like, that's, yeah. Yeah. No, that's no, a no. psychotic and, episode. And how many teenage kids out there blowing up a whole city block? You know what Well, I mean? not it's... many. It's true. But yeah, I, yeah. I knew one. Drugging yeah. their girlfriends. <laughs> Cyrus grew up in West Virginia. They did all the time. Oh, yeah. Virginia. <laughs> East Virginia. It doesn't Virginia. matter. There's no, there ain't no <laughs> state. There's no such state as East Virginia. I'm only clearing it up for the easily confused. In, yeah, bo but... in both states, you stick a firecrackers up cows' asses and running. Well, that, that is true. <laughs> yeah. There wasn't a lot to do. The big sport but, was cow tipping to the point that they even had bars named that there. But, but Just because the that sounds like fun. The difference is the cows in one state are semi-retarded while the cows in the other state are perfectly fine and sleep with with cows they're not related to. No, no, the difference is in West Virginia, you end up some people who look like they might be half cow, half person. <laughs> and in, in Virginia, no, that's not going on. That's not <laughs> well, you guys should institute some sort of genetic exchange program. <laughs> oh, man, it's like the X-Files over there. I don't know, there's this big experiment going on with DNA and cows and well, rednecks. Well, wrong turn was a documentary. It was. Well, uh, Cyrus explains why you're lactating. <laughs> Shut up and drink your milk. <laughs> I'm sorry, Liam. I'm you... <laughs> I was just... Damn, I forgot what I was going to say. Uh, other than uh, I, I come in somewhere right around where you are. I, the, like, I think the movie is very uneven in as much as like there's so much about it like, oh, I hate this kind of movie. And then but e every couple of minutes or something like, oh, but I love this and I like this and I like these characters. And that was funny. And that's kind of not so much. But then, OK, OK, yeah, I dig this here. So, it, you know what? Without there being anything in it to say like oh you got to see this on the big screen i'm going to come in at a high rental because i have a lot of like for this movie it's just hard for you to tell people like yeah. go out and see it i do too yeah uh, you know i i was almost there with you i i think we're on the same page i just liked a little bit more than you because there is oh, that back like and forth there was that whole it totally won me over now nah, just completely lost me now nah, it won me back i mean i was just i was thinking that like those words in my head watching the movie every five minutes like what the fuck was that oh that was good back and forth. I mean, there's one scene in particular with Justin Long where he shows up as the brother of the girl mm -hmm. he likes and he's this total, like, you know, hippie, druggy, beatnik type of guy and they all take, like, tons of mushrooms and it's so fucking funny. Normally those scenes are just trite sure. these days and that totally sells it. It's a different way of showing this stuff and it's funny. The film is hysterical for, like, ten minutes as long as he's in the film, pretty much. So, I don't know. I'm going to give it a low matinee. That, that, that's weird. I, I felt like I liked it better than you. Yeah, no, I felt like you did too but the more we're talking about this the more i'm like you know what i and the more i think about the film the more i forgive it for its faults yes it's kind of and i hate to use this word but pretentious in the way that it's like so affected the way it's so like taking these memes from other better films uh and, and it feels so calculated but at the and same time i did enjoy it can i say re real quick uh justin long is one of those situations that is an example of what i'm talking about He's a guy that came in the movie. I liked his character. His scenes made me laugh. But he where did he come unnecessary. from? Unnecessary. He came out of nowhere. Yeah, he, he, well, he was. He's he's actually not unnecessary because he allows uh, he he allows us to come. He, he allows uh, Nick to come back into situations that he wasn't able to before, and allows things to happen that there was no other way to do. And he's established from the beginning. And when he shows up, everything he does makes sense. It all logically follows. He was the unhappy kid who had a terrible time being raised by the Christian parents, went the extreme other way, and then got a chance for a little bit of revenge and fucking took it. I, I swear you sound like you're talking about yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> do -do 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 Young Carlisle. Fuck you, mom and dad. <laughs> Heathen. <laughs> I'm just going to take my D20s and go back into my room. <laughs> that D&D &D is the devil's work. <laughs>
God damn right. <laughs> I like that even though Michael Sarah is the hero of the piece, sort of, he's the protagonist, they don't really treat him like the hero. Like, it's like, it's almost like the movie is saying, like, yeah, we know this guy is fucked up. Don't, don't get us wrong. Did you have a review, though? I mean, yeah, you, I just had yeah. to it. You know? Oh, I mean, okay. Just fucking around. No, I was, I was. I can't disagree with any of you. I mean, I, I actually fall closer on the side of Cyrus than you guys. I, I low matinee, but I'm really straddling the line there. Um, if you're a Michael Sarah fan, if, you're a fan of the book if you're a fan of this kind of indie mainstream filmmaking you should definitely go and check it out in a theater matinee but if not if you're kind of cringing there is a lot of good stuff there to like uh but not enough to really totally win you over so uh you might want to check it out as a rental i'm gonna fall on a on a low matinee i i liked it but i'm not in love with it Hey, well, wait, if these guys are saying low matinee, maybe I'll change mine to low matinee. Oh, please. No. Oh, boy. <laughs> Stop. Well, right okay, now. I'm, I'm going to keep mine at, 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 a, at a high rental. But Francois wants a low matinee. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, really? Is that what you're saying? That's the, that's the Francois joke. Was, He's been I, saving his, up for uh, that Leon, please. You're, you're, you, you don't have a Francois. Yeah. You have Truck Turner. Yeah, no. His, his would be. <laughs> Tell him you got hit by a truck. Yeah, his would be Frank Quay. <laughs> <laughs> Frank Coys. Yeah, Francois. Um, Francois. But, Yo, you, nigga, that, that, that flick was dope. <laughs> yeah, she, Give me a low matinee on that bullshit. Fire. Good shit, that white boy tagged that shit. He split that open. What is funny, you mean? <laughs> Actually, no, it'd be more like, this movie's some bullshit, man. They, they kept talking about sex, and I saw no goddamn titties. <laughs> I, saw, I saw bra and underwear. I saw no goddamn titties up in the ditch. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, it's funny, because you made a good point in the movie. You turned to me Who, and me? you're like, yeah, you, because I was thinking myself, I was like, you know, how long would it take for somebody just to come in and just punch this kid in the stomach to get hit to stop his reign of terror i mean it's michael Sarah, you know i mean it's, this must be the weakest fucking town it wouldn't be crazy much, yeah. 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 Is, is, what his dad is fucking uh steve buscemi, steve buscemi. what yeah. the fuck is ray it, liotta should have came in and put his foot up his ass yeah, ray liotta wanted to yeah There's well great he sort of did. Yeah. If ray liotta had been his real dad it couldn't have gotten michael Sarah to play the part steve buscemi on the other hand <laughs> you totally see yeah, like true. oh yeah you're his you're his yeah son. i forgot okay. to mention there's a great cast in this movie i mean we have other people coming in like uh, Steve Buscemi, who's who's becoming like more of the. He used to be wild. He's more of a like a sedated character now. You know, he's he's kind of the every. He's he was a, like one of the more normal people in this movie. But Michael Sarah, he was like, man, this guy needs to stop doing this shit now because he's the last person he needs to go to jail. <laughs> who's the guy who who plays his friend, the the Indian guy, who's in everything now? He's, I've, is he's, he? he's actually of anyone in this film he's the one I'm blanking on his name because he always does these small parts but he actually stood out because I've seen him in three different movies and he's different every time and this time yeah. he's so profoundly different that it's like wow this is a really great actor slash comedian he's, he's all over movies he's all over TV he has a recurring role on David, uh, St- David Spade's sitcom he's on Nip, Nip Tuck for, as a recurring character he shows character. up as one of the guys who gets fired in, in yeah, and the air. up in the air he was, he Paul Blart Side characters Not, in was it Paul, uh, yeah yeah he's in Paul up. Blart he's he's a, he's a, one of the main characters in that but you, he's, he's in Fired Up but you were saying Corey like a uh, yeah you know, like we were talking about he's like man Michael Sarah is not the guy you should bail like this because if that guy goes to prison. Oh, oh yeah, oh, yeah. He's, he, oh, man. he's gonna be a virgin for long. Yeah, he's gonna oh, be, no, but not in the right way. He's, he's, he's gonna in be high pop. school. They don't have prison for high school. It's called juvenile detention, and it's fucking sick. Well, uh, oh, that's because like they're in California. Yeah, you know now, what? If it was though, Texas. Yeah, different story. he'd be in jail. <laughs> oh, it doesn't matter. It, you Yo, know what? Texas he, is actually really fucking weak. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, Michael Sarah is so fucking weak, man. I mean, he's like uh, what a buck thirty. You know, yeah, yeah. a buck thirty wet. Buck thirty was one hundred thirty. Yeah, one hundred thirty-five pounds. I mean. Uh, Francois would come out and rape his ass. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot believe I have to do this to you. Yeah, I, love that. I am very sorry to have to fuck you in the ass, my what friend. Is that a fuck club? <laughs> yeah, fuck club. <laughs> yeah, his, yeah. Ass, his <laughs> first rule of fuck club: you don't talk about fuck club. How come, they, how like, come no one else ever shows up to our meetings? <laughs> I do not Sarah, understand it. Michael Sarah would be in pillow fight club. <laughs> and, and, the, and the first rule of pillow fight club is you don't tell the guys in fight club about pillow fight club. <laughs> Yeah, and one hit, kick our ass. Yeah, I know. One hit from that pillow, pow, not so hard. 